chapter 5, verse number uh, 17. Thank you for being here tonight. We, uh, we count it an honor, uh, you folks that are visiting with us. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king of Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David. And David heard of it and went down to the hold. And uh, the Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephraim. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Will thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. Now, this is two separate battles here. Uh, this is the first battle. And David uh, came to Beryl Perziem. David smote them there and said, The Lord hath broken forth upon mine enemies before me as a breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Beryl uh, Perizim. And they left their images, their false idols, that is, and David and his men burned them. The Philistines came up yet again, spread themselves in the valley of Ephraim. This is the second time that they are uh, not giving up. It's starting another war. And David inquired of the Lord, and he said, uh, and David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be that when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, and commentators have described that as like a marching or uh, the sound of, of the horse's hooves as they uh, came into battle, and that may be the angel of the Lord, or it may just be the sound that it made in the trees. Thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. And David did so as the Lord hath commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gezer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for everyone that's here. Uh, fill us, Lord, with thy Holy Spirit. Speak to us and through us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. The battles of the Lord are real today. We don't have physical battles. Our nation could. Isn't it amazing? We have, the <laughs> we have all this technology and all this learning, all this smarts, and yet there are major, major countries around the world that have nuclear weapons that have been souped up since the first one that uh, uh, America, by the way, invented that, used. And they are, I mean, at any time, China, Russia, and even North Korea could unleash those. And the whole idea is, well, as long as we've got what we've got, they got what they got, it's a deterrent. But uh, sooner or later, something's going to happen, uh, and it depends on who's in power at the time. Uh, but this, this, is, uh, this is war, and we are in a spiritual war. And by the way, I want to say this. When you see the Philistines, uh, the nation of the Philistines mentioned in the Bible, uh, it refers to or as a spiritual application of the flesh. We battle uh, the world, the flesh, and the devil, we that are saved, and the flesh has to do with, with you. And the greatest enemy we have, you can see in the mirror in the morning. That's who, we, that's who we're dealing with, keeping ourselves, you know, uh, walking in the Holy Spirit right with the Lord. Because that, it's not Satan, although he does do some damage, and the world would like to do some damage, but the greatest enemy we have uh, is ourselves. And so, uh, you know, we need to walk in the Spirit. As I said, we need to walk with God. So the Philistines in the Bible are a symbol or a type of, of uh, uh, dealing with our own selves and dealing with the flesh or the carnality of other people. Now, these battles, uh, this particular battle is about David gaining power in Jerusalem. And once he gains power in Jerusalem, that's the capital. And once uh, and once that happens, there's going to be a there's going to be a a, a, a a marked difference in who's um, got the power. 
Uh, and so Israel has the power at this time. And uh, the Philistines are trying to divide the army. If they divide the army, they can divide and conquer. And so that's what's going on here. And so David, you know, there's a lot of things we go through and um, in this life that require decisions. We need to pray about everything. You need to pray about the car that you buy. I've, I've had so much trouble with the car I got from Josh by way of Joel, and I'm saying, did I pray about that? I, I don't know, but there's, uh, we need to pray about everything. And even little decisions sometimes are the ones that impact us uh, the most. And so they go into battle, and there's a, there's a big thing going on between the God of Israel and the gods of the Philistines. And they are saying, our gods, which the thing about idols, man can control idols. They're not real. They don't really have power. But, you know, if you get yourself convinced that they have power, uh, you can get men to go to war. So our gods are with us. <laughs> But uh, they're not with them. And so they go into this first battle, and God had already told David, I'm going to deliver them into your hand. You're going to win this battle. And they had battles with Philistines over and over and over uh, and are having them today. And so uh, David uh, smote the enemy, and so... They had left there their images, their idols, and the men burnt them. And, you know, we, you, you see that several times in the Bible. Uh, you see that in, in the book of uh, Judges with Gideon. Uh, his dad had idols, so he burned his dad's idols. And then when he, when he uh, defeated the enemy, he's burned their false gods. So he's showing, I don't respect you. And you remember uh, the, uh, the false gods, of, uh, of Balaam and how um, uh, the prophet of God went up to Mount Carmel and they had a big competition and they destroyed the prophets of Baal and they said, this stuff isn't real. And that's essentially what Christianity is doing today. We're saying Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes from the Father but by him. And that he's the answer. He's the only answer. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, if you want religion, I had religion at one time, I guess you could say. Uh, there's a lot of views on religion. Any religion without Bible religion is a man's idea of how to be right with God. It's an idol. And the only religion that's true, is, as narrow-minded as that might sound, the only religion that's true is the Word of God. The Bible, 66 books of the Bible. And so uh, the second Bible is about to begin, and that's kind of what I want to talk about for a minute. And he said, when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of a mulberry tree. So that required trusting God. It, 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 it uh, uh, describes the need of patience. We need patience. The Bible says that tribulation worketh patience. I don't want patience if I got to go through tribulation to get it, but yet that's how we get it. And so patience is waiting on the right thing. It's waiting on the right timing. Timing is really important in life. And so uh, God said, I want you to wait under these mulberry trees and when you hear that sound going, you hear that wind blowing and the, and the leaves rustling, and it sounds like marching, uh, he said, when you hear that, he said, I want you to uh, bestir yourself. In other words, get up and go, and, uh, and of course he's doing, a, he's sneaking around from behind. There are, uh, war is about strategies. Christianity is about Strategies. The Bible talks about the strategies of Satan. And if you've been, I've been saved 40 something years, and I've got to witness by, through life of, of Satan's strategies. He is 
he's incredible. You know, uh, Paul said this. He said, I re wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, and high places. And in wrestling, I never wrestled, but those that do, uh, you're trying to get a guy off balance. It's the same thing with uh, uh, judo and some other uh, martial arts. You push a person, and then what do they do? They push back, and then you let go. You back up. Now they're off balance. You can throw them. You know, you can do whatever uh, move that your uh, preferred uh, style of combat dictates, but that's what Satan does. He will push you to pull you. He will push you in a direction. He will move you in a direction and you'll think it's your idea and it's really Satan's idea and he is brilliant. And so Paul said we wrestle not against strategies. The word is strategies, his plan. And he has that. And he'll get you tempted in one area and he's saying, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. And he's trying to get you to go there. And then he'll slip something else in. It's, oh, that's not so bad. You know, you didn't do the big thing. Do this. And so that is, uh, that is what Satan does. And so David, he hears that. He's patient. He waits on God. It's time to go into battle again. That's a critical time. I want God with me in the battle. We have battles in life. We have things we face in life. Uh, by the way, I know when when we're younger, we cannot conceive of the idea of death, and we live as if it doesn't exist. And I don't like thinking about it. Uh, but death exists. It's a point that a man wants to die, and after that, the judgment it comes in all ages and stages of life. We have no guarantee of tomorrow. That's why it's absolutely critical if you hear His voice. The Bible says, "Harden not your heart, and let Jesus into your heart." Because if you miss this. You've, you, you've, you've lost at the most important thing in life. You've lost. So you don't want to lose. You don't want to spend eternity without, without God. And so he hears that going in the mulberry trees, and there's something, I don't know, something exciting about that. There's something about they're sitting there patiently waiting, and God said, it's time to go. It's time to move. I do that with witnessing. I do that with, with, uh, with a lot of spiritual things. God said, do this. Do it now. And, uh, and we listen to the Lord. And so he goes in the battle, and he won the battle again. But God is always changing things. The way you did something one time may not be the same way the next time. That's like when you're leading someone to the Lord, you use a scripture. You may use a different scripture. Same, same theme as far as salvation, but it may be uh, totally different. So there, there's, there's a strategy of Satan to divide the enemy. And by the way, it's happening right now in Israel. There's a battle, and it's the same principle. It's a battle going on, and there's a battle going on here. And, and he says, Lord, what, what do we do? And he said, wait till it's time to go. I'll let you know when it's time to go. And you, you can do that with everything. Everything in life, as a Christian, God will guide you. And you'll know. And you get where you can discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. And you'll know. I, I, I've always said this. I've witnessed to a lot of atheists. And I, I remember telling a guy in Yakima, we had some great conversations. And uh, he was starting an atheist church in Yakima. And I said, can I come and preach? And he said, no. I said, why not? I'll let you come and preach at my church what you believe. But uh, I talked to him. I said, just do this. I said, you know, he had traveled the Bible lands. He was uh, an authority on all this stuff, but he, he didn't know Christ. Doesn't matter how, how Bible uh, how much Bible knowledge you have. It doesn't matter how much you've been in church or if your great-granddaddy's uncle's cousin was a pastor. It doesn't matter. And that's not transferred to you if your dad was a pastor. It's not transferred to you. You have to do that for yourself. And it's the greatest decision you ever make. But there's a voice of God. Elijah called it the, 
in, the, in the case of Elijah, they called it a still, small voice. When God speaks to you, you know it. You may say no. You may say later. But you know it's God. In 1976, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. It wasn't audible. But it was like somebody that knew me really well that I had not met. That's what it felt like. And it was so real, it was so powerful, and uh, that I said, you know what, I, I better do this. And I came to Christ that night, January 1976, and have been saved ever since by the grace of God. Amen. So this, this, is, this is one of those battles that we have. And I was telling this atheist friend, I really liked him. We had, I loved having conversation. I loved arguing with him. And... Uh, uh, I told him, I said, I want you to go home. He was trying to rattle me. You know, I love it when people do that. Uh, I'm the king of rattle. But he tried to rattle me. He tried to upset me and all this stuff. And I just sat there and smiled at him. Matter of fact, me and Tim Kipling were over there after this conversation. He was standing there. And this is what I think I told him. I said, hey, I said, um, go home tonight. You said it ain't real. Go home tonight, get alone with nobody around you, and just say, God, reveal yourself to me. He will speak to you, and you'll know it when God speaks to you. I, I, I can think of times in my life, my wife and I, when we first got saved, we'd go out and we'd, you know, knock on doors, witness to people, invite them to church, and one guy's kind of nervous, uh, you know, because we hadn't did that, and, I, you know, occasionally you get chewed out, and I thought, oh, I'm like, we're going to go get chewed out and leave and we'll tell the preacher we did it. <laughs> you know, we did our thing. And we went to this guy's house. He said, come on in. And remember that? We started, he lived in a little uh, single-wide mobile home, and we started witnessing to him, and he started shaking. And I thought to myself, what is wrong with him? And the Holy Spirit said, he's under conviction. And I thought, I didn't know I had that kind of power. <laughs> I didn't. But the word of the, of the Bible, and uh, I remember we were talking and his phone rang, and we've had the most amazing thing. I've talked about the strategy of Satan, and it was somebody who, his wife, I think, or somebody was mad at him and tried to draw him out, you know, away from what was going on. That was the goal of it. But he, uh, he, he, he listened, and he was under conviction. That's what happens with the Holy Spirit. Comes. I've seen that over and over. Uh, so many times. We had one guy we talked to years ago, and he was in his, uh, in his house, and he said, no, I don't want to talk about it. And though we walked to the next place before we got out of his yard, he came running outside. He said, I do want to get saved. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Because that was new to me. I, I, it's not new to me now, but it's amazing how God does that. It's a battle. And our battle is for people that are unsaved. Our battle's for the lost. And then our battle's for the Christian to live a real, uh, sincere life with God, to get their prayers answered. Isn't it amazing? I talked about that this morning. Getting a prayer answered, talking to God and, and God hearing you. And I don't know what it is, but the little things that he does really impress me. When I pray and God does something specifically for me that quickly, that I didn't expect maybe so quick, and God does those things, oh, it's just heaven, absolute heaven. And so uh, we're in a battle. Don't be afraid. Fear not. Jesus said that in the New Testament. God the Father said that in the Old Testament. Fear not, fear not. It's a great life living uh, being alive in Christ Amen. and fighting battles and winning battles over our flesh, over the world, over the devil. Amen. And we're going, at, we're going out, we're going upstream, as it were. A, a preacher illustrated that. My son was telling me he was in a meeting, and it was a big, big crowd of people. He said, I want all the Christians here that can get out in the middle aisle. He said, I'm going to show you what, what Christianity is. And he said, he started walking, walking through the people that were coming the opposite way and started turning people around. 
one at a time. And before long, they were all headed in the same direction. We're going upstream. You cannot prove Christianity by what society does or what society accepts. I don't want to go to a bunch of people that are deaf spiritually, blind spiritually, dead in trespasses and sin spiritually, and ask them for spiritual advice. Do you? I want to hear from somebody that knows God, that's walking with God, and he can, he can uh, direct us. When you hear a sound, the sound of a going, a movement, a in the top of the more mulberry trees, then it's time to defeat the enemy. How do we defeat the enemy? The Bible says it's a pulling down of strongholds. Stuff that's stronger than us, bigger than us, the work of Satan, God says you can pull it down by prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for saving us. And I want anybody here tonight visiting with us or anybody that's a part of this church that's never trusted Christ as their personal Savior. Lord, this is their personal decision. They need to think about it. They need to make sure this is the way they want to go. They need to say yes to Jesus. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And I pray, God, that you would do that. Open up doors for us to share the gospel. We ask in Jesus' name, amen.